I think we're going to start off with Rod. Rod, you've got a couple questions for Derek to get things rolling here this evening. Derek and I talked about um, his potential plan to remove the restricted category. Um, can you talk a little bit about that, Derek? The one idea I had was to basically remove the restricted category of firearms completely. So you would basically have guns that are legal to own for people who are licensed, and you would have prohibited guns, which are, you know, for all intents and purposes, not legal to own. So what that would mean is that for, for legal guns, yes, there, there, there might be, um, you know, a second step in licensing if you want to own handguns, for example. But if you are licensed to own handguns, you would be able to use them in the same way as you would uh, a 12 gauge shotgun or, or, a, or, a, or a standard, you know, long gun that would be unrestricted today. So the idea is that, yes, maybe there would be a couple of different types of courses or a couple of different types of licensing, but the same rules would apply to all guns that are legal. Uh, so you would be able to um, do handgun hunting, for example, or use the handgun for self-protection. So um, that, that's basically the gist of it. And I don't, if anyone has any further questions on it, I can, I can try and clarify, but that's uh, the, the basic idea of what I'm talking about. Shane wants to know, what are your thoughts on initiating castle laws? That's a spicy well, one. It's a good question because that's actually part of my plan. I want to make specific laws that address the right to use a firearm judicious, judiciously and appropriately for self-protection. In case that wasn't clear enough, I want to enshrine in law the specific right of non-retreat when, when in one's home and to clarify that an intruder in one's home is presumed to be dangerous. Colin Gray asks, hi, Derek. Despite the 1993 Supreme Court decision that Canadians have no right to firearms and no right to defend themselves, do you support the traditional understanding of self-defense and keeping arms for that purpose under the English Bill of Rights, which both our Constitution and the U.S. Constitution, including the Second Amendment, was derived from? I so so yes I do and I think we need to I think we need to put specific laws in place so that it's clear um, and I and I so based on what I how I answered the question earlier about castle laws you can you can you know you you know my thoughts on that but I think you know I, I agree that that it, that it already is sort of a common law right but we can't count on the courts to give that sort of interpretation so we need real laws in place that say look you can do this and you know, you're, this is not a crime. Self-defense is always a defense that you can raise, but if you've already, if you've already been charged with something, uh, I mean, that's, that ups the ante quite a bit, right? I mean, that's a, that's a, that can ruin your life for a period of time, even though you may ultimately be exonerated. So I think it's, we need to be clear in law up front to prevent, uh, to prevent these issues. we have no right to own firearms do you have any plans uh, of ensuring any rights to own firearms so that OICs to remove property will become obsolete I think this is more a question about um, gun owners keep finding themselves in the same position you know under a conservative government we sort of have a little bit of breathing room we might even get a little something and then the liberals get back in and it were hammered over the head and it would be really nice to you know, not be living under this constant threat uh, of an impending liberal government. So what, what are your thoughts on that? Well, so part of it is uh, when the conservatives win, they have to actively engage in sort of society changing things like education and, and promoting uh, firearms education as, as much as they can. Um, I mean, obviously, a, a fail safe solution would be some sort of constitutional amendment, but that the odds of that happening are, are very low. Um, although anything's possible, I suppose. But um, the, the, only way I, the only way I think really to, uh, or the easiest way would be to, if, if we did uh, a complete re repeal and replace of the Firearms Act in such a way uh, with, the, with public consultations and so on, that it became clear that, that, that we, you know, the consultations had occurred and we, we had done this with thought. And I think that it would be, it would be more challenging for a, a, a successive government to just throw that completely out, or at least they wouldn't be able to do it quickly. So 
there's no, there's no surefire way of doing it, but we can move in the right direction. And we do that not, by, not only by enacting the right laws, by, but by also trying to change the culture of ignorance that surrounds uh, legal firearm usage. Uh, you know, the, the interesting thing is that on many issues, um, the populace writ large is, is you know, um, they're, they're less informed than they were prior. Like if we're talking about deficits, how, how they work, you know, how, how long can you run them? What, what are the, the final impacts? We, we have a populace that seems to be less and less concerned about these things. So when it comes to the specifics about gun ownership and and uh, and some of the specifics of, of what we've just seen here. Uh, they're just less inclined to know or care. But I think it's incumbent upon the government to promote that type of deeper thinking when it comes to uh, everything in society because actions have consequences. And um, I know that people, you know, there's many people that would like to just ignore politics and, and, and move on to other things, but it really does have an impact on our daily lives. And, and there is a lot of misinformation about guns, but there's a lot of misinformation about many other things. And it's, it's, it's our duty to, to set the record straight.